return to the ring. Put him out, Joe. He says this is come out of the slammer. He's been uh, he's find it difficult to uh, to avoid that lovely food that's out and freely available. If you can afford it. trying to come back and get his life and his career back on track. And he comes up with a big, big combination. Oh, Fletcher's knees over on Fletcher. Yeah, Fletcher's legs are staggering, and he uh, fell back there, and he tried to grab a hold of Negron. Negron's got him in trouble here. Often fighters, when they get in trouble, their legs don't go rubbery, but they stiffen up, and that's what happened with Fletcher there. Yeah. He just got very stiff all of a sudden. Yeah, they start to stiffen up, and he begins to stagger and, and totter on his feet. And that's what happened, and uh, he needs to be careful here. He needs to get on his bike. He can't afford to trade with Negron. Negron's a power puncher here. He's definitely the heavier of the two, and he's throwing good attacking shots, mixing them up to body and head, and he's opening this round very well indeed. John Fletcher undefeated as a professional, 5-0. and He takes a left hook there from Negron, but seems to be gathering himself a little bit here. And his legs appear to be back underneath him once again. Yeah, he, he needs to to get a bit of respect from Negron by nailing him with, with a couple of good sharp punches, but it's too early for that now. He should be staying on the outside and boxing and then settling down later on, but he wants to have a go, and he runs the risk of getting tagged himself. Good uppercut from Negron. Beautiful uppercut. Negron aggressive, but not going crazy, even though he had his man hurt in this, in this first round. And a nice doubling up of a left hook by Joey Negron, enjoying a big first round here in his comeback fight. Back with the second round when Prime Championship Boxing continues. Round two of this scheduled six-round bout. Junior lightweight division, Sean Fletcher in the black trunks, Joey Negron in the blue trunks. Negron returning to boxing after a two-year layoff. Fletcher who had an unbelievable amateur career, 280 wins and only 22 losses. And a number of uh, military and international championships to his credit. An undefeated 5-0 oh as a pro, but he was rocked and rocked big time in round number one. No doubt about that. He was shaking and he was standing there trading with Negron and, and the difference in weight was paying off. Negron hurt him with an uppercut. That's what started it all off and brought that left hook in around the sides and he was able to recover from that and at the end of the round, Negron hurt him again. So uh, uh, he needs to just get on his bike here and, and use his boxing ability. He's trading with Negron too much. He should be staying on the outside and using his, uh, his legs to keep out of trouble. It will also be interesting to see if Negron can keep up this pace through the fight should it advance into the later rounds. Remember, he has been off for a long time, but boy, he just did not look rusty. He did not look like a fighter who was coming off a two-year layoff in round number one. Yeah, he did those body punches. Yeah, pretty sharp to, uh, from the, the opening bell, and his body shots are very good as well. I asked him, how, was he able to work out when he was in, in prison? He said he was able to run to do some calisthenics, but nothing else. He wasn't allowed to shadow box because uh, they don't like... Uh, any belligerent that attitude in the in the prison but uh, he looks really sharp he does extremely sharp especially considering the layoff here Fletcher just sitting on the ropes and Negron is really doing excellent work with his left hook to the body he's doubled up on that a couple of times I think he's scoring a lot of points there it is again yeah, he's picking his shots very well he's doubling to the head and to the body and he's getting his hands back up in time although that was a good shot from Fletcher probably his best punch so far but he's mixing his, he's, he's been intelligent with his attacks. And as you say, it'll all depend whether we can keep this pace up and whether we can absorb the shots to the body. Looks a little bit fleshy around the middle himself, uh, and that's Negron I'm talking about. What can Fletcher do to turn the tide? Well, he, all he's got to do is to stay on the outside and not trade with him. Just use his fast hands. He's got good boxing skills, but he's, uh, he's running the risk. He's committing suicide here, getting in close with this guy, playing Russian roulette. Should stay on the outside and then turn up the heat in, in the later rounds. That's when it's going to pay off if this guy is uh, lacking in condition. But again, he's making it hard for himself by trading in Negron. Oh, right hand, beautiful shot. And Fletcher's in big trouble again. The right hand hurt Fletcher. And he appeared to be coming back, but now he kind of stumbles back into the corner, Fletcher does, as the round comes to an end. Let's 
have a look at it here. Look, right through the guard, hit him right on the bridge of the nose, down the pipe, as we say. Left hook around the side. And watch the way he quickly, we see it from a different angle. And watch it again. Watch how uh, Fletcher's head turns, snaps around him, the left hook, and he brings the body shots in uh, right away there. He Negron has established dominance early in this fight. It's scheduled for six. Really impressed with his instincts in there. Uh, so far yeah you see Fletcher's got uh, the great boxing ability but he, he, he's not able to sit sit down on his punches he shouldn't be sitting down on his punches at this stage and he's made the mistake of trying to trade with Negron Negron has got a six pound weight advantage we know he's been in the sun he can bet your life he's probably another four pounds heavier at this stage in, in the day. and uh, you know the way they night so you can bet your life he's three four pounds heavier right now so he's given away a lot of natural weight and he shouldn't be trading with him as i say certainly not this early in the fight and he's he's uh, paying for that mistake the ground when they're at long range keeps those hands of his moving in kind of a circular motion out in front instead of normally like most people will just hold their hands straight up in a defensive posture he has those hands moving in a circular style all the time yeah he's got good blocking ability he blocks and parries punches that's the thing we don't see very often nowadays he blocks them well and uh, he mixes his shots up to the body well and to the head he's got good accuracy and he, on the inside too he's chopping away Again, it'll be interesting if Fletcher gets over these shaky moments and comes on heavy in the latter parts of the fight. Then we'll see whether Negro really has got condition. Looking sharp right now. Joey's had a, not the easiest life. His mother and father both died when he was quite young. He's been with his trainer, George Russo, since he was nine years old. And Russo's obviously done a good job and been a surrogate father. But now Fletcher answering back a little. Yeah, he's landed a couple of good shots. Uh, they, they look good from the back of the hall, but he hasn't really hit the target area that well just yet. He hasn't hit him on the button, but there's no doubt it's looking good. He's coming back a bit better, getting over those shaky patches. He's still, you know, he's still in dangerous territory here. You know, Negron is still punching very hard, but he's still fresh. Negron getting that jab in between the upraised arms of Sean Fletcher. Negron as he was backing up, threw it actually off his back foot. Oh. Yeah, he leaves a head up in the air, but he keeps his hands up well. He's been caught with a few punches in this round, but still got lots of savvy and, and uh, good boxing skills. Oh, he's trying to hit by Fletcher. Yeah. Yes, a beautiful shot from Sean Fletcher. And we saw the head of the Negron turn a little bit that time with it. So Fletcher enjoying his best round of the fight. Whether it was enough to actually win the round is questionable, but nonetheless, he came back some. And I think the question at this point would probably be asked, uh, very well asked, is Negron perhaps beginning to fade a little bit? Yeah, he put a lot into the first two rounds, and uh, he, be you know, that was a pretty even round for me. It's difficult to, to say which one won it, but uh, what it did show is that Fletcher's got good condition, and uh, he's coming back. Still to come tonight, our NABF title fight. But that man, Quincy Taylor, the defending title holder who won the championship with a dramatic 12th round KO of Otis Grant. And behind on points, he landed that big one punch shot that put Grant down and finished him off. Taylor obviously in a contemplative mood, mood here before his uh, championship defense. Very, very placid and knows what he's got to do. That'll be later on. You'll see Quincy up against Darren Roland kid with a 19 and 1 record round four junior lightweights Sean Fletcher been a world military games champion in the amateurs in the black trunks Joey Negron returning from a two-year layoff in the blue trunks This is going to be a really interesting fight because Fletcher is obviously in great condition. He's looking uh, 
Real cut up and he's uh, very fast and sharp, but he took a pounding in the first three rounds. to see can he turn the tide on Negron at this stage. Negron's, as I say, a little bit fleshy around the middle. If his cardiovascular fitness has been, he seems switching from southpaw to orthodox. He's got good balance, got good anticipation, can see punches coming at himself. He's a very, very attractive looking little fighter. Fletcher appears to be bleeding pretty heavily from the nose now. Some blood pouring through. Oh, right hand by Fletcher, and another one, he follows it up, and he backs Negron in a defensive posture as he was being spun around. He had uh, two good shots in the body from Negron as he turned him around. The second one was a beautiful shot, right to the floating rib. Seems to have done some pretty decent damage to Fletcher's nose. Yeah, Referee Steve Smoger looking at that blood in the nose every time he breaks them. And Fletcher bleeding very heavily from the nose. Good left hand to the body by Negron, who again momentarily switches southpaw. Yeah, but there's no doubt that Negron is flowing a bit as well. He's feeling the pace here. He put a lot in, as I said, put a lot into the, in the first three rounds, and he's beginning to blow a little bit. Fletcher bleeding heavily from the nose, and he's been hurt himself. Push off, push off, push off, Joey. Negron is doing is he's turning him around to, the, to his right hand side and whipping in the long left hook to the body. The real sickening punches he's going around the side of his elbow into the floating ribs. Good shot to the body from Fletcher. That's good work from him. That nose is bleeding very heavily indeed. He, it looks like he's broken his nose. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation, Barry, yourself in your own career, but what about when you're really bleeding from the nose? How does that affect the fighter? And what happens is it, 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 you're bleeding a lot and it's ble bleeding down the back of your nose into your mouth. Your mouth opens and you could be subjected to uh, fighting with your mouth open and it can, can end up with a broken jaw. Negron stays southpaw as we near the end of round number four. I'm sure they'll take a close look at that nose between rounds. Fletcher landed some good punches in that round. The right hand comes here, but what's the way Negron turns his head away? He took the sting out of it pretty well. He moves his head really well. There's a uh, Joey Negron. Impressive stuff from him, man. Uh, he's, uh, he's been away for a long time. And he's, oh, referee hadn't got his hand away, but they don't jump on him right away there. And he'll get a talking to from Smoger about that. I don't know about you, Rich, but I have Negron a comfortable leader in this fight. And you know, unless he does something drastically wrong here, he's going to win it. Smoker visited the corner of uh, Fletcher between rounds to take a look at that nose, but didn't seem unduly concerned at all. Negron starting off with a flurry here now to start round five. Yeah, I'm impressed with Negron. He's, uh, his all-around boxing ability and, and uh, his attacking skills are really good. And he seems very relaxed in there. He hasn't been caught with anything silly. He jumped in that time, of course, after Smoker had broken them up and caught Fletcher by surprise. Then he apologized. You used to apologize after you'd found a fighter, too, wouldn't you? <laughs> you stop it. I can't hit you when you get your hands on. <laughs> but, uh, they're going switching circle a lot in this round. That's a sign that he's beginning to flag a bit. Just taking a breather by switching circle and switching back to orthodox. Fletcher blowing himself here. Those body shots from Negron have been really good. You look at Negron and you see what a ridiculous waste it was for a kid. This kid has talent. I mean, a lot of natural ability. Look at him put punches together. Here he's wasting time in prison. Yeah. Well, nobody can tell how these guys go off the rails, but they do. Unfortunately, there's so many victims side cases in boxing but it happens and the goal is coming back here it's not too late for him he's, he's uh he could make it he's 26 years old but he's fresh for that too which he's uh he's got little miles on the clock here there's not uh, much wear and tear on him he's as sharp as a tack i didn't and that is the hardest thing i think to believe is you see 
see a guy coming off a layoff of this length and you just expect him to be very inaccurate punching and a little bit slow. The reflex is maybe not quite the same. Well, the reflexes have been good and his, his accuracy has been right on. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't affect you so much when you're younger. And he was away from, he was 24 to 26. So it doesn't affect you quite as badly as that. But it's exactly as you say, boxing's all about continuity. And the, this guy's timing is, is impeccable. Well, right now he's boxing brilliant. And the round five, a little smack after the bell. And once again, the inevitable apology. After the feathers for that, should be a great matchup. Look at the good competitive fight between these two, both ranked in the top ten. All right, coming up to the sixth and final round. Well, unless something happens and desperately goes wrong with uh, Negron's uh, boxing, they have a staggering don't punch, don't lead punch. and advantage in this fight. He's boxed absolutely impeccably throughout the fights. And he's had Fletcher in trouble on several occasions, and they have a clear leader. But of course, that's only an unofficial score. And judges have been known to disagree with you, Barry. Absolutely. <laughs> and Fletcher, who is known as Bombs Away, out of the military, comes out with uh, trying to bomb away here. Sean's main duties uh, for the U.S. Navy included the six months of active service in Operation Desert Storm. They supervised the handling of ammunition and uh, jet fuel aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. is uh, doing some fancy dance stuff here. He's staying on the outside, trying to box, switching southpaw, back to orthodox. Oh, he's got Fletcher in trouble. Landed a beautiful left hand. I thought Fletcher was going to go down. He kind of keeled forward and then grabbed hold of Negron. Can Negron finish him off? I think if he picks his spots here, he might be able to do the... Oh, hit him again with another call. Beautiful shot. Yeah, if he puts them together, there's plenty of time left in the round. He can finish him off. But has he got enough left himself? He's worked very hard to the fight. Put a lot of energy into it. And Fletcher's in trouble right above our heads right at the moment. Yes, bleeding heavily and his energy flagging at this point. Fletcher appears in danger of being stopped with just a little less than half the round remaining. Negron picking his spots pretty well here in round number six. You know, on a couple of occasions that he's had Fletcher hurt, he hasn't gone crazy. I think, I think he knew himself that he doesn't want to go nuts and he wants to pace himself a little bit, Barry, because of the fact that he's been away from boxing. Yeah, he's boxed very intelligently throughout this fight. He's been very impressive indeed. And, you know, I see a star in front of us here. He's really, really good. Spending most of the sixth round in a southpaw stance. Now he switches back to orthodox. This has to be a big disappointment for Fletcher and his connections. They presented us today with a very slick public relations folder of Sean Fletcher. Obviously, he's got some uh, backing behind him. Yeah, it must be very disappointed. This is a this is a big upset for him. And unless something, as I say, dramatic happens between now and, and the final bell, I have Negron winning this by the proverbial mile. Well, what do you think about that weight difference now? Do you think that has... That's a huge advantage. You should, they should never have given away six pounds like that. That's ridiculous. Uh, it means so much in the lighter weight divisions. You, you don't do it. That's why they've introduced so many weight divisions nowadays, to, to cut down this giving away so much weight. But it's been to Negron's advantage, and he's won this one, as I said, in a big way. On my scorecard. Bell, end of round six. End of the fight, the two fighters embrace. Barry McGuigan has uh, the returning to the ring. Joey Negron as the winner of this fight. We will wait, of course, to see if the judges do, in fact, agree with Barry. For Negron, away from boxing for over two years. Career interrupted by a couple of stints in jail. Across the way, Sean Fletcher raising his hand, so perhaps he disagrees with Barry McGuigan and McGuigan's assessment, but the only assessment that really counts at this point is that of the judges. We will get their rendering of the verdict when we return to Prime Championship Boxing, so stay with us for the official decision.
back once again at the Foxwoods Resort Casino in Ledger, Connecticut. There's a confident uh, Joey Negron, confident that he's about to get the decision. We will find out now if that, in fact, is the case as we go up to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Glenn Feldman scores about 60 to 54. Bill Hutt and Tommy Kazmarek scores about the same at 59 to 55. All three in favor of the winner by unanimous decision, Joey Negron. Sean Fletcher disappointed as he leaves the ring across the way, having receded for the first defeat of his uh, professional career. He had rolled up five consecutive victories, and most people had him favored here this evening against the returning Joey Negron, who had not fought for a couple of years, but Joey back in action now once again, and he's standing by with our Barry McGuigan. Joey, uh, tremendous performance. Uh, let, us, let, us, let us know what you thought of your performance yourself. A little rusty, and I, I was winning a little much, but like after two years of um, inactiveness, you know, I, I I can't complain. You know, the guy was a pretty good fighter. And well, I, I think that's a bit of an understatement. We thought your accuracy was absolutely incredible, impeccable accuracy for a man that's been out of the ring so far. Your punching uh, combinations were fantastic. Hey, Barry, thank you very much, and congratulations to the winner, Joey Negron, as he advances on and resumes his boxing career in victorious fashion here once again uh, this evening.